Good evening. I'm Ray Cronin. I'm a writer and curator from the Maritimes, and tonight I'm going to talk to you about what makes Alex Colville's art Canadian. Alex Colville was never an overtly nationalistic artist. There are no patriotic themes or expressions of Canadianness in his painting. He often claimed that his biggest artistic influences were the old master paintings he saw while a war artist in serving in Europe. He did not join artist groups or movements. Nevertheless, his work is distinctly Canadian in its subject matter. For me, the preamble to Canada's 1867 Constitution Act sums up Coville's attitude. He was committed to peace, order, and good government. But before I get into this, I'm going to give you a sense of his background. Although Alex Colville is heralded as an iconic painter from the Maritimes, he was actually born in Toronto on August 24th, 1920. In 1927, his parents moved to Amherst, Nova Scotia, where he lived until attending Mount Allison University, just across the Tantramar Marsh in Sackville, New Brunswick. Colville also met his future wife, Rhoda Wright, at Mount A, and they married in August of 1942. By then, he was a soldier, a lieutenant who served two years in the infantry. In May 1944, he was sent to England as an official war artist. One of the most famous paintings produced by Canada's war artists is Colville's Infantry near Nijmegen, Holland, from 1946. In this powerful work, he shows Canadian soldiers walking through the mire of the Scheldt estuary. These are the quiet Canadians who liberated Holland and who helped drive Hitler's armies across Europe. Interestingly, the main figure is a composite image. It has Colville's father's face. Colville always said he thought his, of his father was, he was as a corporal. Uh, and it has his own hands. While serving as a war artist, Colville was present at the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. Here, more than any other time in the 25-year-old Colville's experience of war, he witnessed the full potential of human depravity, and the encounter was traumatic and lasting. In this experience, he found his lasting subjects, the fragile state of humanity in the world, the looming presence of chaos, and the structures and relationships that need to be tended carefully to hold that chaos at bay. On his return to Canada after the war, Colville accepted a teaching position at Mount Allison. The position attracted him because, as he wrote, I decided to settle down in Sackville where I could have the time, the feeling of belonging, the solitude, and above all, the freedom from distraction which I needed to become oriented as an artist. Much of what makes Colville's art Canadian is how rooted he was in the landscapes around the two towns in which he lived his adult, his adult life, Sackville and Wolfville, Nova Scotia. In Family and Rainstorm, we see Rhoda and the children clambering into the car after the sudden onset of rain. Kate Blomadon is in the background, which places the setting on the Nova Scotia side of the Bay of Fundy, near Rhoda's hometown of Wolfville. The Colvilles still lived in New Brunswick when this painting was made, though they would move to Wolfville in time. This is a simple domestic moment, a mother looking out for her children. But like all Colville's work, it is a deliberate scene, an authority figure who has been vigilant and human-constructed shelter at hand for the children. At a time when surrealism and abstract expressionism were major influences on Canadian painters, and when Canadian nationalism was a vibrant source in society, as we see in this work by London, Ontario artist Greg Curnow, who depicted North America without the United States, <laughs> Colville took his own path. His intellectualism, his attitude that reason trumps passion, and his reliance on tradition in painting distinguished him from the mainstream of critically acclaimed Canadian painters of his day. As journalist Robert Fulford noted in a 1983 profile of Colville, we can most profitably see Colville within the context of Canada, not the Canadian art scene, 
but the larger field of Canadian culture. Koval's painting and the thought behind it were products of his reaction to the post-war world. Colville and his insistence on order, on making sense, echoed Albert Camus' definition of a metaphysical rebel as one who attacks a shattered world in order to demand unity from it. Colville is a man in revolt against a world that promises only tragedy. Fulford maintained that Colville should be considered in the intellectual history of Canada alongside such thinkers as George Grant and Northrop Frye, who had their own brand of conservative rebellion. When Colville retired from teaching in 1963, he began painting full time. In 1966, he represented Canada at the Venice Biennale, and in 1967, he designed these centennial coins. He chose animals for the coins because, as he wrote in a statement for the mint, it is a question of finding images which are worthy and appropriate for use in celebrating our country's centennial. Images which will express not merely some particular time, place, or event, but a whole century of Canada and even more. Natural creatures provide this enduring and meaningful continuum. Colville, an artist dedicated to expressing the human condition in a chaotic world, chose images of animals native to Canada in order to express something distinctly Canadian. For him, Canada as a specific idea to be expressed in his commission was best articulated by referencing the land and its animals. To me, that's as Canadian as you can get. In 1973, the Colvilles moved to Wolfville into what had been Rhoda's family home and Colville lived in Wolfville until his death in 2013. As with Sackville, the landscape around Wolfville, the Annapolis Valley and Cape Blomidon, the tidal flats, marshes, and rivers of the Bay of Fundy became the setting for his paintings. The vantage point of this painting is from the highway, coming in from the direction of Halifax. The overpass for the West Brooklyn Road is at the top of a long hill that slopes down into the lowlands of the Gasparo Valley and the tidal marshes of Grand Pre. The next stop, for Colville anyway, was home. The waving figure in this painting was based on a real person, a man named Freddie Wilson, who for years stood and waved to oncoming traffic from the overpass. However, the actual figure painted here is the artist welcoming us to what curator Andrew Hunter described as Colville country. Thinking deeply for Colville happens wherever you are and best happens with familiar things. Eternal and ultimately unanswerable questions. Where are we going? What will the future bring us? How will we remember and be remembered? Are not answered, but are considered deeply in the simplest of ways. And to Prince Edward Island, for instance, the act of looking through binoculars contains worlds of potential meaning. What makes Alex Colville's art Canadian? It is its ability to convey what he fought for, peace and order and an end to chaos. It's this and its rootedness in Canadian places, its ability to transform the mundane into the deeply evocative and to create iconic images that are familiar and fantastic at once. Thank you.